sorry about your day. <laughs> Hola. Hola. Who, I don't. I don't need a mic. <laughs> I, I did theater. Oh, I'm so <laughs> glad I made it. I'm so oh glad Oh my too. gosh! Five hours at the Albuquerque airport. <laughs> Nothing but cactus. You know, and cowboys. What can I tell you? It's a combination. But I just, I just wanted to thank you because. There are so many incredible films that, that are classic. And they, because of them, the filmmakers for so long, you're here. And you'll be here another hundred years. But I'm a film maven. In the snowstorms, I watch three or four movies a day. And um, just, re just get to see narrative and culture for, from so many people, and it just, you know, like my first book was The Red Pony, Steinbeck. And 50 years later, when you read it again, it has different meaning because we've lived and experienced so many things. So sometimes they change our, our curiosity, our political position, our culture, our ideas. We change and we grow. And it's so important that you continue to show all of these incredible movies. You know, from, we, we didn't, ah! <laughs> get on here, come on over. This is the man I'm gonna tell you, he came out to New Mexico in a snowstorm. It's so incredible. And because when I talked to them, it was 80 degrees, and as soon as they showed up, they were like, dump snow on them. They're like, oh, you lied, yeah, I did to get to here. So, but anyway, I'm so happy. I, I'm a classic now. Yeah. <laughs> Because of, because of Ben, Dan, Ben, uh, I, you know, my narratives go back to great, my great-great-grandmother in Wyoming, who was like the first black Annie Oakley or Foxy Brown, if you will. She had a hotel for the blacks and, and Chinese that worked on the railroad, and she was a sugar beet farmer. And she taught my grandfather to teach us girls how to do everything the boys could do. You know, bring the, the tractor in, the boat, change tires, spark plugs, you name it. I can do all that stuff. I, I knew that. I knew that. That's why I spark plugs in the boat. But, but he made me, I told him I could name 10 tractor companies and he made me. And I went to 12, I think. So, uh, but anyway. Um, By the way, I just wanted to interrupt for one second and say this is a little glimpse of what happens when you interview Pam. <laughs> What? I mean, you don't even ask a question, and you get all this great information. I mean, you are a you are a font of stories, and you have led like uh, you know, like you are the. Uh, Paul, you said it right. You're like the zealot of. Uh, oh, Paula, stop! Yeah. I can't spell it. <laughs> you have been you ex in, from the time you got to L.A. and even your story before getting here in the late '60s is amazing, and your story when you got here is amazing. Thank you, thank you. Oh my God, it was gonna be the podcast. You know, Ben made me cry. And I didn't beat him up. But I did make him blush when I told him, well, why was coffee so so popular? And I said, well, most of you weren't supposed to see it, you're too young. But it was basically, you know, the, the, the case of the exposure, the brown nipple, and that's what made films. <laughs> He says he's blushing again. <laughs> well, if he, you know, women had been. So That's what we're gonna call that episode, by the way, the, the brown nipple. Just which one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was to normalize our beauty, because when I played in, in the, um, the Steve Carver film, The Arena, at Benelucci's uh, uh, the, uh, studio, Chinachita. Chinachita, yes. I was, I was an African. You know, uh, uh, indigenous woman, and everyone else was Christian and covering. And they said, "Pam, will you be, you know, you know you mind showing your, you know, bush?" Um, no. <laughs> what, what oh, no, no. <laughs> I was a bush woman. Oh, all right. Sorry. Yeah. Right. And so I said, I said, no, I, I, I'm standing here, and they're throwing water on us, and I'm going, what the hell? You know, and so I felt I wanted to be like those women I saw in National Geographic, who are so free and so beautiful. 
And I didn't want to have all this other stuff oppressing me as a character. And so, you know, I, I could have waxed and scared everybody, but I didn't. So I, 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 I really wanted to, and I did. I was going to ask you for the podcast about, wax. about waxing. Yeah, we didn't get to it. Um, but, uh, but we can now. Yeah, we can now. Um, but they didn't have wax in the back. In, and I'm 23% Nigerian, you know, by the way, so it comes natural. And, um, and I'm 23% um, uh, let me see what else. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, everybody was just doing it back in the day. Twenty three percent Nigerian. Yeah, yeah, and then and the other is Native American. So that's forty six percent. Okay, and then we have um, the um, colonizers that own my family. You know, they were hot. Boy, we had a lot of kids. Um, the from who owned the RJ Reynolds um, tobacco company in North Carolina. And um, and then Somehow Filipino got in there. That's Chinese and Spanish. Right. So come and you shot up. you shot like three or four of your first movies in the film. I know, and they're gonna give me. Quentin was there this summer. Quentin Tarantino, and they he was there for a film festival. And he said I had to six. I had to sit watch six of your movies. <laughs> and he says I said I know you'll never be the same. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> you know I said but you were my inspiration, and I wanted to. And he did. He says they're coming after you next year. You know, I say, that's all right. I, we can do some movies. But but my family was there. They're from Leyte. And I got to meet some of them. And, 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 and the movie, what's one of the movies that's where, I did. that's where Douglas MacArthur came back to the Philippines. He of came ashore to Leyte. Of course he did. But he didn't jump out of a plane with his luggage like I did with that's some right. of the actresses no, that's from right. the big dollhouse. We had to jump out on a 50 foot mesa while the plane was slowly rolling. And my agent said, well, was it first class? Hell no! They had to throw the luggage out. We had to jump out the plane before it took off and we had to come around again and next push me out. I said, I ain't going. They pushed my ass out the door. So, in case you can't tell, this is going to be a good podcast. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, Pam, some of these people are going to want to talk to you, so let's, uh, let's mingle. Thank you. Pam, come here. Oh.